Soil is an incredible living system covering most of the planet. Um, it has an enormous capacity to hold carbon. And as we increase the carbon content of our soils, we tend to see really good things happening. We see water holding capacity increase, fertility increase, productivity increase, biodiversity increase. So it's a really logical and, and rational place to put surplus carbon. And understanding the carbon cycle is really the core and the key to understanding what actually drives agricultural production. So we take deeply sequestered carbon from fossil fuels, we combust it, and we turn it into carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, right? Then the question is, how do we get it out of there? So then our oceans are doing an incredible job of sucking up some of that carbon. The problem is when carbon dioxide enters the ocean, it becomes carbonic acid. So our oceans are acidifying. That's a problem. The other opportunity, of course, is for plants to take up carbon, and it enters the biosphere, if you will, through plant photosynthesis. And that's, that's great. But as we know, in the Western United States, forests have a nasty habit of returning their carbon very quickly to the atmosphere in the case of catastrophic wildfire. So that really leaves the soil as a significant carbon pool, in fact, the second largest carbon pool on the planet, which, as I said earlier, as we enhance the carbon content of our soils, we actually see good things happening. So that's really the opportunity presented by carbon farming. So in 2020, Yolo County set a goal to achieve carbon negative emissions by 2030. So bringing more carbon into our soils than we're emitting by 2030, while centering equity and ensuring a just transition. So thinking about all sectors of our economy and all community members here in Yolo County. And so when we thought about putting this goal together and embarking on this planning process, you look at a community like Yolo County, where almost 90% the land use is agriculture. When you think about what opportunities are out there to meet this goal, nature and land-based solutions are a huge part of that. Carbon Farm Plan is an opportunity for us to really demonstrate and illustrate and share with others the positive impacts that farming is already having with or without a plan and show that we're good stewards of the land and that we're doing a good job in sort of this climate smart farming effort. You know, it's already going on. River Garden Farms is a 7,500 acre diversified row crop and rice operation. Um, with mostly rice, we do a lot of row crops, processing tomatoes, sunflowers, and a variety of other things. Practices that we're already doing are cover cropping. We've got a couple of hedgerows, including the wildlife corridor. We've got vegetated ditches, and we're doing a number of things. Well, there are a lot of reasons for a farmer to consider a carbon farm plant, but from our perspective, it's really an educational device. We want to work with the farmer to enhance their understanding of their farm's role or position within the global carbon cycle and how they might engage with that actually proactively to the benefit of their farm production. I think the, the Center for Land-Based Learning, of course, but then also the RCD, they really did a good job. We tried to do this a couple of times in the past, and it's kind of, it's, it's a big document, and it's a big lift, and the team this time really kind of, they saw it all the way through to the end. I think the, the carbon farm planning process offers the farmer an opportunity to really evaluate all the carbon capture opportunities on farm. And that's something that, that generally folks don't take the time to, to actually spend time to figure out. So with, with the assistance of a carbon farm planner, a producer can actually evaluate all those opportunities, identify those opportunities, think about how they can go about optimizing the actual implementation of those various practices and where they are best applied on the farm. And maybe even about the, the sequence in which they want to implement those practices. For example, they may want to plant a windbreak before they think about planting their orchard. And building soil carbon and system carbon is one way to mitigate the impacts of climate and build resilience into our farm system so they can actually respond effectively to the changes that we're going to see coming down. I think Yolo County is an amazing model for carbon farming work. We already have so many producers who are doing amazing work in the carbon sequestration space, whether they know it or not. And these practices are working and they have benefits both for um, the producers and for meeting our carbon reduction goals. So if we can create more opportunities for education, show other um, growers what the benefits of this are, I really do think that we have this opportunity to expand this model, not only within Yolo County, but hopefully within the region, the state and, and, and nationwide, I think we have the opportunity to do that.